Identification of major group for Loligo vulgaris and Octopus vulgaris. The first one is Loligo vulgaris. Here is the picture of the species of Loligo vulgaris. As you can see from the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and the species itself. Other than being called Loligo vulgaris, it also has many synonyms, as you can see at the box. Alright, let's get to know what is Loligo. Loligo is a genus of squid and it is first described by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck in 1798. But Jean is not the one who earlier used that name. Moving to Loligo vulgaris, it is also known as European squid and common squid. It belongs to class Cephalopoda and the family of Loliginida. This species is a neuritic and semiplegic species which lives from sea level to depth of about 500 meters. Loligo vulgaris is well known distributed between the North Sea and the British Isles, also in the North African coast, including the Mediterranean Sea. Next is Octopus vulgaris. As you can see, there is the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and the species at the first box. And then also the synonyms of this species. If we go generally for octopus, octopus is known as soft body with eight limbed molars of the order of octopoda. And it is around 300 species that had been recognized. The octopus vulgar is also called as common octopus. And it is belongs to the class Cephalopoda and the family of Octopodida. It is a benthic neuritic species occurring from the coastline to the outer edge of the continental shelf. This species range from the eastern Atlantic, extended from the Mediterranean Sea and the southern coast of England to at least in Senegal at the Africa. According to Roper et al. 1984, the habitats for the octopus is mostly at rocks, coral reefs and the grass beds. This is the external organ of Lolico vulgaris. And this is the internal organ of Lolico vulgaris. The material that been used for dissecting technique of Lolico vulgaris is squid, which is Lolico vulgaris second, scissor, forcep, slide cover, epo paper, and dissecting tray. The first technique to dissect the loligo vulgaris which is observe the squid as a whole identify the dorsal which is the back of the squid the dorsal side has darker shading than the ventral side place your squid on the dissecting plate with darker dorsal side facing up identify the following feathers of the squid which is mental funnel and chromatopores. Second step, which is count the number of the arms and tentacles of the squid. Third, look at the suction cup with a magnifying glass. Fourth, locate the beak inside the squid mouth. Step number five is cut open the eyes of the squid. 
Look at the size and location of the eyes of the squid. Step number six, cut up through the mantle. Step number seven, identify the gender of your squid. Step number eight, locate the two gills and gill heart. Step number nine, Dissect the digestive system of your squid. The digestive system consists of the esophagus, stomach, cecum, intestine, anus, and funnel retractor muscle. Step number 10 is find the insect. The insect is attached to the intestine of the squid. Step number 11, clean up once you have finished dissecting your squid. This is the external organ of octopus vulgaris. While this is the internal organ of octopus vulgaris. The material that have been used for dissecting the octopus vulgaris is octopus which is octopus vulgaris second scissor forcep slide cover fo paper and dissecting tray the first step to dissecting the octopus vulgaris is observe the octopus as a whole identify the external of the octopus Place your octopus on the dissecting plate with darker dorsal side facing up. Identify the following feathers of the octopus, which is mental, funnel, arm, suckers, and chromatopores. The second step is count the number of the arms and tentacles of your octopus the third look at the suction cup with a magnifying glass fourth locate the beak inside the octopus mouth the mouth can be found in the center of the arms step number five is cut open the eyes of the octopus Look at the size and location of the eyes on the octopus. Next, carefully cut through the octopus mental using the dissection scissor. Then, dissect the digestive system. The digestive system of the octopus consists of the stomach, intestine, anus, esophagus, posterior severely grand and funnel retractor muscle step number eight find the silvery which is black insect the insect is attached the intestine of the octopus next clean up once you have finished dissecting your octopus Place all the dissecting organ back into the cavity of the octopus and dispose of it. Carefully clean the tools and wipe down your work surface with a cleaning solution. Loligo vulgaris digestive system and reproduction system. Digestive system. The organs of digestion in squid include jaw, radula, salivary gland, oesophagus, liver, stomach, intestine, and anus. Squid typically eat twice a day. Food is then food is grasped in the jaw and gripped by the radula, which is like a tongue with a teeth. The radula transfers the food to the trough from which it passes through the oesophagus. The oesophagus connects to the mouth and to the stomach. The esophagus receives digestive juices from the salivary glands. The esophagus empties into the stomach. The stomach is a small, shiny white sac that connects to the stomach pouch or cecum. 
Digestion begins in the stomach. The cecum also performs some digestion and is the primary site of absorption of nutrients in squid. Digestive enzymes are added by the liver and the pancreas. The stomach and cecum are usually found behind the liver. The stomach pouch dummies contain into the intestine a narrow tube adjacent to the stomach pouch. The intestine empties into the rectum and finally the terminal end of the digestive system, the anus. The anus empties into the funnel or siphon, which is the exit for all waste product. Reproductive system, squid, in which complex structure and elaborate behavior are involved. Here, eggs are fertilized before the egg capsule is deposited. Also, neither the penis nor the ovida can be extended beyond the mental cavity. Internal fertilization is affected by the male's use of its hectocotylized left ventral arm to transfer sperm packets or spermatophore from its penis to the mental cavity of the female beside the mouth of the ovida. The mental cavity of male squid has a single cigar shaped gonad, the testis, located on the left side of the mantle. It is usually white and has a series of tubules and ducts associated with it that comprise their male reproductive system. Sperm produced in the testis pass through the vas deferens and then the seminal vesicle. In the seminal vesicle, the sperm is encased in a spermatophore composed of several tunics or auto coating. In female squid, the eggs are produced in the ovary. The ovary looks like a bunch of a crab and is shaped like a ice cream cone. It creates in the mental cavity between gills. Squid have a shell gland and nitamental gland which provide outer coating of the eggs. In Loligo, the spermatophore may be placed in a seminal receptacle found beneath the mouth. In either case, when the spermatophore is removed from the nidam sac, the cap is torn off. Once exposed to the seawater and placed inside the female, the ejaculation organs turn inside out, resulting in release of mass sperm. The female simultaneously releases egg from the mental cavity and holds them with her arms so that they can be fertilized by the sperm. Once the eggs are exposed to the seawater, the coating hardens and the egg capsule swell. The female then attaches the egg string to the ocean bottom. Sperm and egg maturation in squid is typically regulated by environmental factors such as temperature, light, and available food. Octopus vulgaris digestive system and reproduction. Digestive system. An octopus begins its digestion by breaking its prey shell with its beak or tentacles. It then takes a bite out of the meat. After that, the food enters the buccal mass where the food is grinded by the radula. The food moves from the buccal mass into the crop through the esophagus. The food is digested there a little and then moves into the stomach where even more digestion takes place. Next, the food moves into the cecum and intestine where dig digestion and absorption take place. Lastly, undigested food is removed by the anus. Reproductive system. Common octopus are viparous and have separate sexes with no sex reversal or hemaproditism. After a successful mating and when conditions are right for fertilization, a female lays 100,000 to 500,000 eggs. They are attached to the substrum inside the den, either individually or in a clump, and she protects and cares for them until they hatch. The hatchlings are then carried away by the currents and they feed on phytoplankton for 45 to 60 days. Only a few of the hatchlings survive to adulthood. Sexually mature drastically change the female life process and activity. Her body stops growing and she remains in the den without food, discontinuing eating for the rest of her life. Female common octopus, octopus dies soon after the egg hatch as they are too weak to eat due to massive decrease in their digestive gland weight. After mating, male octopus are often seen engaged in undirected activities even during the day in the wild and in captivity. In captivity, this behavior may continue for some time.
in the wild. They probably result in the octopus quite quickly become an easy prey. The entire life cycle of common octopus only lasts between 12 to 15 months. Circulatory system Octopus and squid They have a closed circulatory system. They have three hearts. Two of them obtain the oxygen that are located near the gills and the main heart that pumps blood throughout the rest of the body. They use hemocyanin instead of hemoglobin. The hemocyanin, which has cooper, causes their blood to be blue. Hemocyanin isn't as effective as binding oxygen to the blood cells. Because of this, they use a lot of oxygen from their environment. If the water changes, it will affect their ability to breathe. Nervous System Octopus A common octopus has about 500 million neurons in its body. Not all of the neurons are inside their brain. Most of the neurons are in their arms. Meaning, they are controlled from the brain and the arm itself have a separate basic motion control due to the neurons. Both of these controls are working simultaneously. Nervous system for squid is similar to octopus. They have two nerve centers that link together down the body by two giant axons. They are one millimeter thick. Squid's stellate ganglia contain the largest nerve cells in the planet, which is why it is used in research today. They use this to contract its mantle and to jut away from predators at tremendous speed. So now I will be talking about the sexual behavior and spawning of European squid and common octopus. European squid. European squid known as Gonochoric. It is a, an individual of species are one or two distinct sexes and remain that sexuality throughout their life. And that means they only have one sexuality and it's live throughout their life. The male will perform various displays to attract potential female for copulation. During copulation, male will grab the female and insert the hectocotylus into the female's mental cavity where fertilization occurs. From this image, you can see spawning season, they will be immigrated to the place where will they will meet other squid to meet and if in b male parallel meeting which is a successful meeting which only occur one squid and one squid but it will happen if there's an third party come in which known as sneaky meeting but yeah there will be uh, competition with the male to get the female yes and then after that they will lay eggs and the right side and this the top is a female and the male inserting the left arm which also known as hectocotylus which insert to the mental cavity of the female and then it will transfer the spermatophores to the female then it will fertilize uh, next spawning uh, spawning season for squid uh, throughout the year uh, between December to April but it depends on the season also because some places has different summer range and Autumn range, yeah, and and male a uh, female, and female uh, can lay up to twenty thousand small eggs, and it will deposit in glut glutinous tubes which contain tens of eggs each. Then these tubes are attached to debris or other solid object on a sandy 
or muddy bottom. The temperature for the eggs um, uh, between 25 days are at 22 degrees Celsius and at 45 days it has to be um, around 12 to 14 degrees Celsius. The size of the male determines the number and size of spermatros. The size of the male determines the number and size of spermatophyte. What? Okay. <laughs> the size. <coughs> this. <coughs> okay. The size of the male determines the number of size of the spermatophytes. Wait. The size of the male determines the number and the size of the spermatophytes. The male would reproduce more during the second time than the first time, which means their second time of reproducing will be much more than the first time. Yeah. Secondly, common octopus during mating. The male approach the female and then he fans on the female for a while until the female accept him. And then the male will then sit next to the female and then inserting his hectocotylus into the man the female's mental cavity to pass the spermatophores. Um, it will take up uh, several hours um, and then it may repeat. The meeting will repeat over a week either with the same partner or other partner. Which means not the first time they meeting, maybe it will occur with another partner. And then the spermatophores placed in the oviduct and empty cases are discharged. The meeting occur if the female immature and only when females ready to lay eggs constantly fence of the males. So from this picture you can see um, the right side is the male and the left side is the female. And then this, the, this hand of the male, um, which is called hectocotylus, which is known as mating arms, inserted to the female's mental cavity. Female become restless, then she search for shelter to lay eggs without disturbance because um, she is protect and if she's just lay the eggs in open space, it will decrease their survival rate. Mature egg fertilization in ovidical glands then discharge together with mucus, which used for the egg stock together in string and attached to substrate. The eggs laid in the shallow water and then it will attach to a substrate. For example, um, in the rocky shore, the octopus will hide in hole, with then cover it with shells or stones or any other substrate. And in coral reef, um, they will use coral, which increase their shelter and protection. If in the sandy or muddy bottom, um, they will use an empty mollusk shell or a man-made object such as cans, tins, and bottles and tires. Example of the pictures where the eggs been hung on the substrate and the female take care of the eggs. Then um, the female can lay up eggs from 100,000 to 500,000 eggs throughout the year. During the 
egg laying female rarely leave the eggs uh, she won't she won't go out to find food she will just take care of the eggs and this took her to four to five months um, and it's at low temperature she also take care of the eggs including cleaning with her arm tip and direct jet of water she will <clears throat> inhale and exhale which provide more oxygen for the eggs which increase their quality then once the the octopus hatch from the eggs which they are freely um, the female will die shortly because um, it lo it loses one out of three of her pre-spawning weight. The Liga vulgaris egg must comprise multiple strings and each of the strings contain an average of 90 over eggs. Egg mass is deposited on a fixed substrate or attached to the floating object. The environmental condition will affect the embryonic development and hatching process. For the larvae, it has a planktonic lifestyle that lasts 2 until 3 months. For para larvae, it shows some characteristics that resemble the adult. Octopus vulgaris larvae are planktonic, swim actively, and have high metabolic rates. During this stage, the growth of the arm are fast relative to the mantle. Para larvae also show some characteristics that resemble the adult. Octopus vulgaris egg also stick together in a string and attached to a substrate. The embryonic development have roughly three periods. The hatching process starts with stretching mental movement that rupture the epic of cell in the hatching gland. Alright, so today I'll be talking about farming and culture techniques of um, cephalopods. Uh, the species that we've chosen is the Loligo vulgaris and the octopus vulgaris. So a brief introduction, uh, the cephalopod culture in the world is actually currently developing. It died out a while ago since it started in the 80s by Nabi Tabata, uh, where he cultured um, three different species of uh, a cuttlefish. And ever since that, not all of intense aquaculture practices of this cephalopod have been done. So because of that, uh, there's only a small scale culture available for a limited amount of species based on a paper done by Vidal, Vidal and also Xavier back in 2015. And those three species, if I'm not mistaken, includes the um, Sepia pharonis, uh, the ferro cuttlefish, done by Nabita Bas. Next is the European squid. This is the species that we have chosen. Now, there are no known documented attempt at mass culture for this particular species due to the complica complications. And because of that, we have inadequate information and we need more research to do this. Uh, generally, the failure of uh, mass culture comes from the mortality of its paralarvae. Paralarvae are the babies. The babies of um, the larvae of uh, cephalopods, they're called paralarvae. Uh, so currently, what are our, our sources of Loligo vulgaris? Well, safe to say, wild caught baby. This is the only valid way of us getting uh, cephalopod at, at this current moment because we are not able to produce them properly yet. However, there is actually a paper on its sister species, the Eurotuthis duvaukeli, formerly known as the Loligo duvaukeli. Or it is the Indian squid or the Indo-West Pacific squid. Uh, it is very abundant in Southeast Asia. Uh, in, for us, this is actually what we see in the fish market and what we eat every day. In fact, 90% of the squid fishery in the Philippines are actually these guys. When you look at it with a much closer eye, the, the two of them actually, they do look alarmingly similar. Maybe that's why they're cousins. Next is the culture tech flowchart of the L. vulgaris based on the paper that I've mentioned earlier. Alright, so basically the male and female broodstock are caught from the wild and then placed at a ratio of 2 to 1 in an 8 ton spawning tank. It doesn't matter what size it is, I mean, it doesn't matter what shape it is as long as it's 8 ton. And then the female will deposit its eggs on the substrate, usually in the form of nets, 
place at the bottom of the map, in, at the bottom of the tank, and around five days after, after mating, uh, she will lay her eggs. Uh, after eight to ten days, the para larva hatches. And the para larva is being fed uh, the larvae of shrimp, so it's basically you're feeding babies to babies. Uh, the adults, however, can be trained to eat uh, fish meat and also trash trash fish based on the papers that, uh, that I've mentioned earlier. Alright, so next is our next species, the common octopus, the octopus vulgaris. It has a very high economic value, so I think that's probably why people are interested in it. But it has a even though it has a lot of aquaculture effort that has been made, Vesperas et al. 2004, it still has no success in mass culture. Uh, just like our previous species, the challenges include housing conditions, nursing techniques, and appropriate diet for the adults and the babies. Uh, we still don't know how to properly take care of them without dying off in in the masses. So, so what do we do? Well, the only thing that we can do, we are rearing its wild-caught species. So basically, um, live, sp live specimens caught from troll nets or what have you are being taken and then they are being cultured in cages. Some people, some, pe some people, they do indoor culture. Like for example, the Kona octopus farm in Hawaii, uh, they culture these species, these uh, particular octopus, indoor in tank. Um, they are still working on trying to culture it from the larvae, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's still bearing no results up to this day. So a recap, a recap to what I've just said. So basically a lot of research has been going on currently, but there is no solid way of culture from hatching to adult. So we're still dependent on wild caught sources. So I beg you, good luck aquaculturists, you're our only hope because everybody, they be eating squid. Thank you.